<laughs> Welcome everybody, it's very nice to see you all here on a, on a dark, cold um, autumn evening but going to see pictures of a bright, sunny, warm place. Um, it's a tradition we've had for several years now to do a joint lecture <coughs> here um, with the British School at Athens and also a joint lecture in Athens um, and this is something which I hope we can sort of you know, develop more and build up more connections with and um, I'm sure we're the winners in this arrangement uh, because um, you know, we, we send out our brightest and best or, or occasionally clapped out our directors to, uh, to talk in Athens um, but, um, but in return uh, we tend to get the leading lights of Greek archaeology uh, to come and talk about the very latest stuff um, that is being found, excavated and getting conversations going in the Aegean world and it's an enormous pleasure to welcome Today, Dr. Stella Kuzuraku, who is the um, F4 of the Piraeus of West Attica and the Islands. And this sounds like a sort of enormous sort of, um, uh, sort of medieval realm, doesn't it? Um, and patrols this vast area. I mean, it, it hadn't occurred to me that you know, actually wouldn't have just one F for the whole of Piraeus. There's so much there. But I'm glad you've got the islands as well. Um, we're going to hear about a site that's excited um, debate and news stories are all, all over the world. Well, I, I was um, Googling it to look for good images and so on, and I found sort of stories in the German popular press as well as everywhere else. And it's also very nice to have with us to, to enjoy, the, enjoy the talk. Um, the director of the British School of Athens, uh, Professor John Bennett. Um, so welcome, John. It's nice to have you here with us. Most of all, Stella, you are very welcome. Thank you for very much to hearing. Thank you very much. It's a great honor, and a very um, uh, and I'm very very glad to be here. And um, thank you for the invitation. So, uh, the first time that this excavation has been ever um, given a, 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 the first first lecture, it was uh, at the um, British School <coughs> at Athens uh, in uh, two, uh, 2013. And um, it was something like the, pre, um, the prelude of what happened later because uh, it was a very, uh, very big discussion about that, uh, that cemetery and um, many, many questions that I think that a part can be answered today, uh, three years later. So um, I'm glad to uh, remind everybody that it was the first discussion, the first, the first scientific discussion in uh, the warm home uh, of the British School at Athens. So, a uh, little bit of history. Uh, he went away. <laughs> He's not there anymore. I don't know what <coughs> um, To the photograph. I hope it's just this slide and not any other. Well, just a little bit of history of this site and its uh, excavations. Well, all that uh, began in the end of 19th century um, by Mr. Uh, Grigorius Burnias, that was um, uh, not an archaeologist, but that was not a, a big problem for, for that time. Uh, and he, 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 he was told and went and see and uh, dug out some vases and the um, <coughs> offerings were spread all over and some of those were sold in the British Museum. Uh, but uh, then uh, <coughs> again he asked the permission of the Archaeological uh, Society to be uh, helped to continue the excavations and finally the Archaeological Society denied. So just some years later, 1911, uh, it's the Archaeological Services started the first trenches 
for just one week of uh, excavation and a few um, a small trench that gave a lot of buzzes that uh, they are in the archaeological uh, the National Archaeological Museum at Athens and then uh, uh, in 1915, um, that was the first soft touch uh, rescue excavation by the archaeological service and the first scandal of given by that uh, cemetery. We are going to see later on with that, with why it was a scandal, because a social and ideological um, very hard uh, scandal for for the for the Greek society of that time, and the the poor archaeologist that was uh, working on that, and um, then also the finds are um, in the uh, National Archaeological Museum, where we start and finished the catalog, <coughs> and they are a lot. And um, we have invited uh, a young uh, colleague, a young Greek uh, archaeologist, to um, start the publication, and I hope that it will be uh, soon. Then again, uh, rescue excavation started in uh, 2012 for the um, construction of the new opera house and the new national library. Uh, by the uh, Stavros Nyarkos um, Foundation, who uh, paid also the uh, rescue excavation as it is allowed in Greece. That finished uh, this year in March, and from now on it is uh, an excavation of the Greek Ministry of Culture. And whatever we're going to tell between us today, you have to have in mind that the excavation is continuing, it has not <coughs> finished yet, so perhaps things are going to change. Um, well, uh, have a, um, a, a short view of the, um, of the thing. Are you working? Oh, it doesn't work on the screen, I'm afraid. It's, no. It's because it's... Uh, no, never. Yeah. Uh, it's not so so uh, easy to. to mm. Well, we start the excavation by, by the blue part, uh, where the um, municipal park uh, exists today and um, the, uh, is open to the public, and then we continued uh, in the, the that part all around. I just put in color. Uh, the two parts of the uh, of the cemetery, because we excavated also that part and no finds scattered pottery and finds that has not been there in situ but they have been uh, uh, taken by by the uh, by the river, uh, but uh, not any 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 cemetery in that part of the place. Uh, here and here we have excavated in addition 10 hectares of land and we know, we are sure, that the necropolis uh, goes in, in under the today uh, park. Uh, it is an artificial hill. The Greek law does not allow us to uh, excavate when it is not digging out when it is just putting on. So we had not the opportunity, of course, to, to, to dig, but we know that in the edges we have the most thick parts of the cemetery, and we know that the central part of the cemetery should be over there. That part is not excavated, but it is uh, by the law um, um, meant to be uh, not <coughs> used from the park either because as we are going to see we are very near to the excavations of 
Yes. Why is the name of Delta Phyron the New Greeks? They don't know. They think that it is because the Isos or the Kifisos rivers they go down and they are making a delta like the delta of Nile. <laughs> this is not true. Delta is because of that scheme of that pattern uh, of the old, of 19th century after Christ, uh, part of Phyron with uh, the, the, the first trace of uh, um, the axe north-south of the capital and that road here, that it was a natural path uh, as we have seen in 18th century and 19th <coughs> century and that made that, ski, that pattern of delta. That is the name of Delta of Fire. So the uh, 1911 photographs from the Archaeological Society and many others, of course, helped us to locate the old excavations. And this is the first one, and this is the, uh, uh, the uh, other ones that it corresponds exactly here. Um, this is very important. <coughs> we were working on that location from the beginning of the excavations because we, we had the um, opportunity to see uh, um, a special, special uh, dis disturbed place over here who was the, um, the, where, where Burnias uh, has worked because he cut the, the pots containing uh, the infants and uh, he, he left them over there and took just the little, um, little pots that they were uh, able to be uh, uh, given to, to different museums all around. So just to have a look from that um, the environment of uh, the Phaliron. Well, this is a map of um, um, of the of the of the whole district because of the long walls, the Phaliron um, wall, and what is interesting because it's not uh, Ilisos, <coughs> for instance, is is a river going from east to west. What is important here is to know that in that date also what was visible were the Alipedon, as the ancient Greeks call it. That means the marsh, um, salty place with a lot of sand. And Alipedon is over there and it is sandy in the courteous uh, times of uh, uh, 19th century. That is important. And um, many, many years now, the, the, all the um, archaeologists that they worked in that part of uh, Athens wanted to know where exactly was the Phaliron Bay because it was the port of Athens in the archaic times and no sturdy place were ever, was ever found. In um, our last uh, exca rescue excavations, uh, not inside the park of Stavros Niarchos uh, Cultural Center, outside that, near the seashore, we have um, uh, uncovered uh, that uh, uh, of the Second World War uh, German um, structure and under that structure it was a wall that we have the not the opportunity to see it completely but because uh, it was a very tough uh, job but it is a, a wall that was um, an ancient wall and all around uh, parts of uh, uh, amphoras hills amphoras of the fifth uh, century so we think that we have at least one uh, point where to have a sturdy place, a sturdy earth place in uh, the Bay of Phaleron that of course today 
it, uh, it has been along, alongside inside the uh, sea. A map of the 18th century depicting uh, also that uh, dance uh, sound tunes and um, well we have to see about that marshy plain uh, uh, because um, we are going to see that, that that environment was the reason why in that site, in that place, they have, we have the, um, the necropolis. Because, of course, it was not possible either to, to uh, have houses, either to work the land for cult cultivation. So the only use of that, it was the use of uh, uh, a cemetery. It's not the only example that we have. Cemeteries near the seashore, the sandy seashore, uh, and, and from the archaic times, so that is not an exception. And uh, um, these special environmental uh, conditions, we have detected them also in a painting of the uh, 19th century. Uh, and we have detected also the kind of the flora that is um, probably not very dif different from the kind of the branches of trees and bushes that we can find in the pyres of the necropolis. These very specific environmental um, conditions of a big shore Protect, protected from the sea by big dunes and that was changeable with many geological episodes sometimes inside the antiquity sometimes it was a lake sometimes it was dry and it was just marshy and sometimes it was completely dry and they could have paths to go for the cemetery, we are going to see it's very important to explain the, um, the cemetery. So the big uh, axe has been done from uh, the across <coughs> towards the seashore uh, and uh, uh, in uh, uh, the 60s it's the last photograph that we have with the real um, the real uh, seashore because then it was completely uh, changed. What happened in, uh, for that place in the 20th century it was a very good um, option for the cemetery because, because the land was um, um, public and as it was, uh, uh, it was not given to have uh, uh, houses and uh, blocks of houses as all the other parts of Falyron and Calithea and all the district around. So it was saved because it was a national public land. Secondly, because the states uh, said to have their, uh, to, to something that it was just sealing the earth and that was the race track of uh, uh, Athens, of Greece, till the Olympic Games of uh, um, the uh, of that, that late late period. Then you can see what happened. Here is the cemetery layers. Here is the earth that was put in order to to make the the race track. And that stripe here, the geologists explained to us that it is meant, it is natural, and it has been done by, uh, probably by the, 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 the um, rain, uh, getting down uh, and taking with the elements of the stones, and that <coughs> stripe completely sealed 
after the antiquity, completely sealed the necropolis. So uh, the necropolis stayed undisturbed after the ancient times because of that geological <coughs> formation <coughs> in the 20th century because of the race trap. So when we, we started the excavation over the park over there and we found uh, a road, we found um, uh, a well incised uh, in order to be constructed and workshops of uh, uh, all around uh, because um, it was um, uh, already in the antiquity uh, uh, water was running down, it was um, a torrent that it was uh, um, made with uh, um, walls uh, in the bulks of the torrent and um, a bridge probably not here uh, in another part of the road over that torrent. It was very scattered and not very well preserved so that to be sure what exactly it was but with workshops and, um, uh, uh, and use of um, uh, uh, workshops and use of um, porfira. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> yes, all right. I will find it. Yes, more X. No. Yes. Uh, So until September, this September, uh, we have found uh, uh, 6,148 uh, graves. And um, as you can see by the pie, the majority of them seem to be pit burials followed by um, pot burials. Again, um, the bulk of, the, uh, of the stratigraphy this is that geological um, uh, strut here, and uh, uh, this is the the, the cemetery uh, part, and this is uh, the, the brown uh, the layer of the clay and the brown layer, and this is the a disturbed part of modern times, which is very rare. But this, the taphonomy uh, has been disturbed, um, has disturbed been, been disturbed inside the antique times, and we are going to see uh, why. Um, you can see here that you have three levels, three layers of tombs. Sometimes, this under they are classical and this over they are archaic which is an extreme example that I'm giving to you but it can uh, it can be first because it has been with different episodes a salt lake with the uh, deposits that they were moving inside the uh, water and then because it was a popular uh, cemetery, a cemetery of not the upper class like Keramikos, and people they are using and reusing the uh, containers, the vases, and we are going to see that. Um, so um, we, the random this, the deposition of graves in the cemetery caused in sometimes the overlaps between the graves. Uh, we have uh, no, uh, in the Valerius Cemetery, uh, uh, this axe that we have, and we have seen it in the first slide of the today area, uh, is um, in the axe of north, northwest, south, southeast, covering a strip of land approximately of 200 meters in width. The cemetery gives us a terminus post web of the latest decade of the 8th century BC, while 
the last period of use is placed in the end of the 4th century BC. And inside that times, the main uh, period of use uh, is, of course, the archaic one. <coughs> Regarding uh, the special distribution of the burials, no organized pattern can be discerned except for the funeral piles which follow the orientation of the symmetry, <coughs> which is this one. And we think that this is for practical reasons, because the, the air uh, was <coughs> circulating that way in between the tunes, so it was for the practical reasons for the pyre, for the fire to get the pyre. Um, in the uh, <coughs> normally in the western part edge of the excavated cemetery, the clay soil allow us to locate the great pits. That it was very difficult to locate them in the uh, opposite edge because of the sand, and we could not see any any part of the of of the dugout pits. But these exactly uh, environmental uh, conditions, they were uh, good for the preservation of the wood. So, um, like that one, with, uh, which was found in the cemetery, and it was used as a coffin for a young um, a youth, but uh, before that, it was uh, perhaps used like a boat. Uh, this is now in the uh, direction of conservation. And uh, we have uh, already done uh, the first uh, examination of the samples. It has been dug out in huge conifer trees. And um, so that um, it was repaired as many, many items in that cemetery, many, many pots, they are repaired. This one also, it was repaired before the last use that was a funeral one. And it was perhaps his first use as a small boat, even in order to, to be used also <coughs> for the, that site, that place where it was uh, a lake. Um, so, let's see uh, the kind of graves. We have the, most of them there, deep graves. So, uh, the pit graves uh, we found um, in, in the cemetery are simple pits dug mostly for adults in, and that we found the skeletons in various positions. Usually they lack of offerings, they have no offerings. <coughs> I would like to show you some special um, cases. These are the cases of um, couples and even that one but if they are hand by hand uh, the anthropological uh, uh, we have not of course complete any any um, study for the moment and um, we are not in position to tell you exactly if they are uh, man and, and woman or two men in both cases but uh, we are going to see that. Uh, so another special case, very special, it's the <coughs> unique one that we have. It is um, the great <coughs> of a young lady, a young woman, died in childbirth. And you can see the skull um, here of the newborn and the other body of the newborn inside the womb. The children, uh, when they are uh, buried in pit graves, it's very rare, it's not something very usual. When they are 
um, in the sand, uh, they give them a lot of humoral presence. Pre presence. Uh, that means that they are not in pit graves because they, it's more cheap. They, it's for other reasons that they are in pit graves, the children, because they are very richly, um, uh, very rich offerings like that one, which is very near what you know from the Athenian Agora, and um, it has um, uh, small vases and. Um, figurines and this one has to be a toy because the um, it's too separate one gets on the other like a toy and uh, uh, or another example is this one which is, um, with Rami uh, is uh, with this scene <coughs> um, a horse and the rider under the horse Perhaps a storytelling of fallen rider or some acrobat, we don't know, and that the usual lion and cock. And these are uh, and then Corinthian time vases. And then this is um, interesting. It is the Ionic um, goddess that we know, and you have in the British Museum, I have seen that one from Camilos from Rhodes. It's the uh, 1863 of British Museum. Uh, and this, uh, uh, it's uh, on mold, made on mold. You see the, the city of uh, goddess with polos, with big hat. And it is on mold, but the child on her, to make her kurotrophos is made by hand and put on it. So that is interesting. Normally we have the demons uh, that have a child on them and they are put in the graves of children in order to protect them. This I think, I don't know any other example of the Ionic goddess with the child on her, perhaps. I don't, uh, I don't say it does not exist, I don't know. Um, so, um, in uh, the classical times, the classical pit graves, they are, have usually, they contain usually uh, offerings uh, or by uh, vases, as you can see. And uh, youths, <coughs> the juveniles, they have the same kind of um, uh, uh, pit graves uh, like the adults, but then the offerings they are uh, conform to their age, like uh, this one. That he has two little bags with uh, uh, knack bones and a strigil uh, over the second one, like that. And I don't know. Uh, I have. We have to look at that. Uh, that one with uh, a metal um, part inside. A colleague of mine told me that she knows from uh, Salamis same thing, and it was in order to turn it um, in the way that it has to be turned, uh, that went to cheat the, the others. I don't know if it is that or not. Well, uh, the, uh, this kind of jewelry, they are not offerings, they are uh, meant to be uh, part of the dress of the, um, uh, of the person inside the tomb. And um, we, have it, we have rare, it's rare, but we have rings and uh, amulets on that. The pot burials, the most of the pot burials, of course, they are meant to be uh, tombs of children. Uh, less care and exp uh, is expanded on the case of the infant dead, and uh, there are simple burials, um, course were left plain. Nevertheless, the offerings get in balance. Uh, the families, they give to their infants uh, a, a burial, even if the outside uh, pot is plain and not 
uh, and cheap. Uh, and they give it even uh, in the age before the uh, amphidromia, that means the, the time where the baby, the child has uh, his name given. Uh, so, the pot burials consist mainly of Sephora, <coughs> Pithi, Hydre, Hydrie, and they all, not all, but the main, uh, the most of them, they were previously uh, used as storage and cooking vessels. Uh, so, a number of that pots uh, are repaired during their use in the kitchen, inside the household. That means that it's an indication that they have less value even, like if they were new uh, pots. Um, uh, so they are given to the two pots used previously in the household, and many of those they have been broken and repaired before being used for the graves. Uh, so they are sealed with flat stones, smaller vessels or clay fragments of shirts. And often the burials consist of parts of previous burial pots, like you see here. This is very important for the stratigraphy, that it, it is the distribution of the, of, the, of the symmetry inside the antiquity and inside the same period, the archaic times, for instance. So you can see here one vase, which is scattered and found even in, a, in, 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 a, in another grave. It's very rare and exceptional to have big uh, vases, vessels like that Pilamphora decorated with the Sphinx. Uh, and this is for an adult that it was placed, we think, for a secondary cremation. Sorry. Yes. Then what is, a, it's a unique occasion, that metal vessel, used perhaps for a secondary cremation. We have not finished the uh, work of the content yet, in order to be sure of that. Uh, in most cases, the funeral vessels, they are unpainted, as we said, but there are exceptions, like uh, this is um, a vase that I like very much with the dog, of, of hundred, hundred on the, on the belly, and uh, this one uh, with um, a fight scene of wrestling. Here it's the, the thing when they started the the fight, and they they choose who is going to start first. And here that we can see also. Um, well-known painters like the Passas painter or the Polyphemus painter over there. But that is rare, it's not the... Uh, many of those vases also, they are inscribed also in the idea of the secondary use of the vase, that because the incisions, the name of, I don't know if it's a name, well, I think so. Uh, uh, they are made after uh, on the pot. Well, what they have inside from that photograph is taken from from the uh, embouchure of the of the vase. Uh, so, regarding the pot burials, the offerings, usually miniature vessels, they are placed inside, and uh, smaller vessels. They are placed outside. This one uh, is for another use, and this one uh, another. Some of, of sometimes we are sure that it was libations that they have been after the uh, the end of the procedure of the burial, and they have 
then left where the, um, the amphora gets a little bit placed in order to be connected with the <coughs> area. So what we, we have, um, like them, we have uh, consist mainly of wine and tableware vessels, like skifoi, inohoi, cups, olg, and in the lesser degree, alabastra, pixides, cotiles, and pinachia, and this good night <coughs> with the scene of the processes. We don't have many of them. I think just two pinachia. So sometimes some part the vessels, the, the ceramics, the pottery. We have also inside the pots some um, uh, figurines and some um, uh, jewels. Some amulets uh, like these um, bore um, teeth uh, or some amulets like that. Uh, we think that they belong to the child when he was alive. So the funeral bars of Valeron Cemetery, they have some uh, interest uh, because, of, because they were very well uh, preserved. Uh, in the most of the time, they have been um, open pits for that pyres dug on the surrounding sand. Uh, the flotation, unfortunately, doesn't gave very, gave very, very few uh, poor uh, <coughs> results. Just um, uh, olive pit stones and um, uh, little, little uh, jewelry here and there. We have made flotation of every content of vases, of pyres, of, uh, even if it was a pit grave uh, for um, uh, always from uh, the belly and the head of uh, the defend, it was really very poor. For months <laughs> flotated, but it was very, very poor. Um, I think it is because of that uh, geological episodes of turn down and up <coughs> in humidity and uh, in so um, the funeral pies they are constructed <coughs> by bricks and um, uh, they contain uh, the uh, when when they, uh, they 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 it is the procedure is finished. Then they are they are covered by sand, like like a timbos. We are in a very early time. We are in a kike time, so that that's why I made many many. It's like a timbos, but uh, you see, it's fully constructed with slabs, slabs here and bricks, mud bricks, and um, koniema and plaster outside, and then when it's finished, uh, there is a mount of sand on it. They're interesting, the pyres. Um, then I, uh, some of the finds that uh, are part of the vessels. Here we have that uh, axe, and, uh, which is a tool, and some nails uh, here and there. And we think that that is <coughs> the occasions of the carpentry works that took place on the site, like the vase of the Gillette uh, collection of the Sapphol painter Amphora, depicting the procession when, uh, with the relatives during the night, and the carpenter over there with the axe. The six graves. They are made by slabs coiled from the vicinity, uh, used for side stones and um, sometimes covered. This is the graves. The variety of width of these graves can be, maybe be an indication of different burial customs. For instance, 
when the skeleton has the same measures uh, and then the grave is matched, um, it's more wide or less wide, we were thinking perhaps of having shrewd uh, around the, the corpse or the corpse banded with stripes of cloth. Sometimes uh, we have um, a domestic animal, uh, uh, perhaps we have a piglet over there, uh, or the same thing uh, that we have seen before, um, vases of previous uh, tubes that they are cut and they have been used for libations. Um, here's the head, here's the belly of the woman. So, uh, used like for another uh, <coughs> reason. Uh, for what we have about Larnakes and uh, Lutires, it is all, only for, for children, meant to, to have uh, um, <coughs> children burials. And uh, they can be uh, simple or double, same, together, and we have uh, vases as offerings, and these are Euterian, so the whole of uh, that they have been used secondary uh, for, uh, um, like, Larnakis, but this is something that we have in all archaic uh, symmetries all over Greece. I mean, has nothing to, to be special. Lutiris has been often, very often, used like Larnakis in second time. Uh, here and there are some of the finds that they are unusual for, <coughs> for the Fanira cemetery. We have an alabastron from uh, Stone Alabastron, a, a clay pro, pro, protom of a clay mourner, probably attached to a funeral vessel, a dice probably from a game table, uh, which is uh, used uh, for funeral uh, reasons. A lecanis that found, uh, well, uh, an offering table, and the lecanis because uh, we <coughs> it was intact, uh, sealed. We don't know what it is inside. We are waiting for having the scan first. <laughs> and uh, then Ostraka of ostracism, uh, like this one, of the Mistocles Nocleus. They, were, they took them with them when they, were, they died. Uh, so for the animal burials, <laughs> the most of them they are um, horses. They are dig out inside the sand. This one, for instance, that it is an archaic one, we have an archaic um, 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 grave on, on it. Uh, so it is uh, in very, very carefully made. And um, uh, it has been really in a, a very in position. Uh, we think that perhaps it has to do with um, or related to the uh, dis distinguished capacity of the animal, victor in races, and of course of the owner's upper class <coughs> social group. And uh, in that grave we have the, um, uh, the head of a horse that accompanies the dead. Here's the, what we call inside that uh, the Delta group, Delta from Delta of Feleran, but Delta because of this model. So we have the Biothanat <coughs> in, in Greek, uh, ancient Greek literature. That is um, burials of men that they have suffered a violent death when found scattered all over the excavated part of the cemetery. We will represent them um, uh, for, according to taphonomical criteria of the position, the presence of bones, and the skeletal injuries. 
here. <coughs> here is the dead in the no. Here is the dead in the face down. And um, tied. Here they are completely tied, hands and um, and uh, legs together. Here they have bones in their hands, uh, metal bones, and they don't have the the feet, which is something that goes with these kind of burials, and because they have a sema, <coughs> the only cases in that cemetery of a sema, it's the delta group. We never have a sema for a normal burial. Here we have metal bones in the ankles, also. And here, like that, Here are these one of 1915 that they, they, they have a scandal, in the, like I said, in the Greek society. The, the king was very worried about having uh, a classical uh, excavation of the classical times of, uh, and have uh, that barbarian uh, way of uh, giving death. And we have found that skeleton, so not all of them, but we have found uh, the skulls of uh, ten skulls of the, the and uh, ten skulls in the archaeological museum and four uh, full skeletons, but very disturbed in the National Archaeological Museum because they have, were hidden and before the Nazis entered Athens. They were hidden with all other um, uh, um, uh, antiquities under the floors, but they were not in the catalog, so we have found them recently during the Olympic Games of 2005. And we have conserved, um, we have cleaned them up, so there each one of that poor guys, they were on a plank, on a wooden plank. It's, it was really an apotimbanismos. Uh, that was like the way of uh, uh, having uh, five metal bones in uh, neck, hands and handles. <coughs> and we know that uh, that was um, from the archaic times to the late antiquity. And it was for really severe reasons. <coughs> or because of a nibris, like in Prometheus, the Smotis, or, be or because of something very, very important, politically important, like the Samians aristocrats. But <laughs> they have been uh, apotibanismeni in the Militus Agora. And I wanted you to notice not only that they were on a plank, but they have cut, not cut, they have uh, um, hit their heads with uh, something of uh, wood, and we are going to see it later on. Uh, well, uh, finishing, uh, we have that. Um, In the research the excavations, uh, some examples of captives buried in mass graves. And uh, captives that they are tired behind their back, the hands, but they have given them uh, li libations because of that vase over there. And the last ones of that last uh, march, 80, uh, uh, the mass grave of 80 tied men found in three trenches. One, two, three. So, um, 
the first uh, trench has the, the most of them, it's the most populous, and uh, they were placed with care, laying in their back, or with the face down, <coughs> on the north-south axe. <coughs> Hands uplift, have metal bones. We have them here. <coughs> You can see uh, the metal bonds in the worst. And they were executed in the same way, all of them, with a fatal hit in the temple. And we think that it was a wooden bat. So uh, the majority of them were men. No woman has been found. As so far, and they were very young, the majority also, they were young adults. And they were young from near 20 years old, but some of those, they were very, very young, they were children. <coughs> and uh, um, so the dental hygiene is above average, Though quite notable that <coughs> of the perimortem fractures, fractures that have been before the death. And here, one of the most young, between 12 and 14 years old, because of this here inside, that it has not, it's uh, raised, it is. Um, uh, a tooth, a wisdom tooth that has not been raised yet. What else has been found with them? The two in a hole from the first row. The two rings completely similar from the second row. And for the third row, one arrowhead inside the thorax, or one here, and that, which is in, interesting, it is a knife that has been found in parallel in, with the, um, uh, the leg, like if it was inside a boot, hidden uh, weapon. So uh, this is the uh, date of the <laughs> in Ohio from the parallels of um, <coughs> between the 2nd, 3rd and the end of the 5th century and last. Whatever was the reason that led this man to the death penalty, the most hard punishment may have been that no one cared to secure their eyes and their mouth after death. The, that punishment that possibly charged the victims and the and executioners, or the whole city, indeed, for a long, long time, and made that new procedures reacted in the society. Thank you very much. <coughs>